All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Wes Peters. I am the director of league expansion for the NCDA and coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats. And I have the pleasure of introducing and speaking with the April Baller of the Month, Dr. Peter Bro. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Peter Bro. Uh, just recently crowned doctor and uh, former captain of Western Michigan and also former director of 2022 Nationals. Thanks also, for joining me, Dad. Wes is Dad. That's right. Thanks for joining me. Um, first <laughs> off, congratulations on Baller of the Month. Um, thank you, thank you. How does it feel to win it in your last possible month as a not alumni? Uh, you know, it's a pretty typical of everything that I do is just it's all last minute and kind of just barely squeaks it out. Hey, you, you, you squeaked it in there, though, so it counts. It only took me 14 seasons. <laughs> 12 well, if we don't count COVID. Early season. on, you didn't really, you know. Well, I mean, I was a, a small fish in a big pond at Grand Valley, so. Yeah, no kidding. Speaking of, excellent segue. How did you find dodgeball way back in 2008? So, uh, in high school, we would go, like, lifting. I played football in high school, and we would go lifting after school. And there was a guy who, like, his son went there, and he was, like, kind of associated with the football program. But he would just, like, lift there after school with his kid, which, like, whatever. But he had a Grand Valley dodgeball shirt on when he, like, would go lift. And that's I'm like, oh, okay. Because I was always the kid who was like, let's play dodgeball in gym class. Yeah. And they were like, uh, no, that's not – we don't do that. And so I was like, well, shit, if I'm going to like go to college here, I might as well like check this out. And so like that led me to seek them out during their campus life night or whatever, like the name of everyone else's club, mm. uh, like where all the clubs get together and show up. And so I signed up and then the rest is history. Interesting. It's always it's always fun to see, hear everyone's backstory for how they stumbled upon college dodgeball. So <clears throat> I remember my first practice, too, like we were we, we were just like playing. We put all the new guys against like two or three of the uh, old guys. And then it was down to all, all of us versus one. I think it was Alex Suka. Uh, and they're like, OK, Alex, now you can grip throw. And then he just murdered all of us. So, <laughs> I was like, yeah, sold, baby. Well, you, you had that reaction, as did pretty much everyone who's going to be listening to this, I imagine. But it doesn't always go that way when you start th pinching at the new kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're old. As Correct. Am I. Getting older uh, all the time. How on earth have you managed to play college dodgeball for, you know, almost 14 years in a row? What's your secret? Um, I don't know. You just kind of never let it go, I guess. You stay in school, kids. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just got, I just found myself lucky enough to be in places with clubs or like able to play more or less the entire time. And I think that my, like I have a very like physical cardio focused play style of running around and like throwing in whatever. So I think that like even going to like one or two practices a week helps keep me and kept me in pretty good shape for it. Mm -hmm. Until I got fat and broke my leg playing dodgeball. Wow. And then I, then I had to, Give it a rest for a little bit, but yeah, freak accidents happen, you know. <clears throat> I don't know. Good, good, uh, good throwing mechanics, honestly, is what's like saved my body and my arm and shoulder. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you do have a pretty unorthodox throw, though. It's like a little is side it? arm guy. It's it's hard, but I don't know. I haven't really like ever really watched a video of my own throw. I've only been like watched by other people and told different things to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's worked out for you at this point. Yeah, it's it actually it's only improved as time's gone on. Like it, it used to be absolute dark garbage, but thankfully it's gotten that's better. How work when you practice. Yeah, just keep at it. Uh, Throw with your whole body, not just your arm. The that's use. true. Yeah, it's all in the hips. Uh, could you ever imagine you'd still be playing competitively in 2022, much less still be here in school finishing up a PhD? Uh, I, think you get this I honestly, no, I thought I would have failed out of the PhD program by now. So we made it. But yeah, I don't know. Like I always thought that I would just keep playing and like my time at central, like playing with like you and, and Riley and then like with elite and everything like that. I was like, well, I'll probably be playing dodgeball until I can't no more. 
like be like those old old guys from Doom or whatever. Um, Rise, I think. But yeah, I mean both. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. And I guess like the dream is to just stay with it long enough that like mm-hmm. when Tristan has like maybe like a youth dodgeball tournament or some something like that, I can just go dumpster people. And beat up on the kids. Yeah, exactly. Just like I did at Western, you know, make a team of 17, 18 year olds and then just beat up on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's why I started UC, so I could still feel good about myself, right? Isn't that what we all <laughs> want to do at this age? <laughs> yeah, except for most of your kids are better than you now, so like... They are. I think I did something right if that's the case, so... That's fair. Then again, they're all just really talented, so I don't want to take too much credit. <clears throat> all right, let's jump into some goofy questions. Okay. Who's your, if you had to pick one player of every decade to face off against, and that can be at practice or in matches, doesn't matter... Uh, let's stick to college though. Who would it be each decade? Um, I get to pick three, which is, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the, that's the joke. <laughs> Honestly, like the, the early or the, the late two thousands is kind of like just a play. It was honestly so long ago. Yeah, it's no hard. It's really hard to remember, but probably, I guess if I had to pick like a, a player to play against, like against, I would have to say like Felix, probably because he's the only person I know. Who was still in the league at that time? Uh, but Felix and I, ironically enough, did our first nationals together. So oh, we'll, go, we'll go with Felix for the 2000s. Uh, but for 2010s, 2010s was a good year because, like, that's when I was with Central for a lot of time. Uh, and uh, I think what was the name? Dan on MSU. He was the uh, one of the kids who would run all the time. Oh, um, Dan. Not ringing a bell. The he, knows who he, he knows who he is. Uh, and then uh, probably Cody Putnam, because Cody Putnam and I had yeah. an uns- like an unspoken rivalry of running for the ball in that I would run for the far ball and he would get the close ball and just absolutely tattoo me every chance he got. So, But you would get but, that middle ball though, right? I got the middle ball like just about every time. And Cody doesn't throw hard, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he knows. And I'm still throwing, so I think I won that one. True. He's tried uh, then, lately, but it hasn't come up so well for him. Yeah. And the 2020s, um, I mean, you know, obviously we've we've really only played a few, like at Western, we only played a few games. But I think one of the most memorable people we played against was Dan, I think, LaRussi or whatever, the captain from UK. Um, we played them. They were one of our first wins, first and only wins with my, uh, like my time with the program. And we got that, at, that was against – them at cleveland state and just my entire team took to him because he's just a very silly fun guy to play against so cool very interesting answers i'm glad you named somebody that everyone would actually or most people would actually know for the 20 2000s yeah yeah i mean well i I honestly don't remember any other names or even people that i remember there was one kid from central who had like a glasses tape no, he had like a glasses cage. Oh. I think his name was like Aladdin or something. Oh, I have no idea. That kid must not yeah. have been on the team when I joined the next year. No, it was, it was before your time, young man. <laughs> you joined, what, one year before I did? That's all it takes. Uh, all right, top three seasons from three to one, if you can figure that out of your college career. Uh, my third favorite season was probably my second season with Central. Um, no disrespect to any of the Grand Valley guys or whatever, but just like, again, small fish in a big pond. It was really hard to kind of like get excited about a whole lot. Uh, but second season with Central was a lot of fun. That was, you know, when I think you and uh, you and Brett were the captains for like the last year or yeah, like the last year, something like that. That season was really fun um, because like that's kind of like when you and I started like really hanging out and doing doing shit. Yeah. Uh, and then my last season at Central was fun uh, just because, I don't know, it was just like me and Riley just running around on the team and, and undercutting Shane and Zach, telling everybody else <laughs> what to do because they wouldn't. Uh, and then this, my, honestly, like it's going to sound cheesy, but this this season was definitely my favorite season of all time. Like, I don't know, it's just something about like working with and working like so closely with players that you build up from like just from start to finish and it was it was so much fun 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Even though we didn't get to like play as much as we wanted to, even though we didn't like have the showing that we wanted to at nationals, like what a fun, just absolutely great group of, of people to end it with. So, no, I don't blame you one bit. Uh, honestly, the seasons to just to relate at UC, like coaching the team, starting the team, have been some of my favorites as well. So I totally relate there. Yeah, seeing that seeing that growth is is really yeah. like really something special, especially when you when you get to see it yeah. like as a collective whole instead of just like you know with one or two new players that come in. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm sure you're pumped <clears throat> to see what they do going forward next year and beyond. So. Yeah, they're. I'm very excited to see what they do. They need like maybe one or two solid recruits, and they will be like a very strong team. I yeah, believe winning, winning some games next year. I think for send sure. Send it. Send it now. WMU top top eight at nationals. I think they could they could hit top eight. Honestly, if really if we had done a few things differently this year, we could have. I don't know if we would have cracked top eight, but we could have gone a bit further in bracket. But in experience, and I'm, I told them next year, like, use the money that we made from nationals, travel, play other teams, yep. you know, get that experience playing. No, I mean, there is something to be said for taking your lumps against the Michigan teams over and over. I mean, I'm sure it developed your kids a lot quicker. Yeah. I mean, we had, like, every time we went in, I said, these are good teams. They will show us our mistakes. Um, it might be a very rough game in terms of score, but so long as we are learning and coming away with good stuff and good like talking points, it's, it's definitely nothing to beat ourselves up about. Yeah, no, I, I think they have a bright future. Um, yeah. So speaking of, let's stay on that topic. What was the process like for starting a club at WMU? There's the directly <laughs> the answer here on, on yeah, record. Yeah. And I have to keep this family friendly, right? Uh, it honestly was very, very hard. Uh, Western is not like, like they have some nice, like good people that help us out. But as a collective, like whole, it was hard getting the club off the ground. Um, yeah. You know, they charge us for practice space. Uh, and, you know, we only have a few like recruiting opportunities. And they're always like, well, you can table, you can table, you can like put stuff up. But especially as one person trying to generate that, I guess, hype. It was very hard until we got, you know, a solid group of like five people who were willing to do stuff. Um, But then like they charge us for practice space and like, so we had to adjust for like dues and try to get like people coming in be like, Hey, this is a sport that maybe you're kind of familiar with. Also, Mm -hmm. please give us a lot of money so we can still play (laughs) this. And crazily enough, it wasn't a top selling point. Um, until we got things rolling. And once things were rolling, it wasn't so bad. Uh, like getting practice space was okay. Cause we got some funding from the school. You know, we had some like uniforms and, and shirts and some stuff to kind of do with our recruiting. And so once, once we got it rolling, it wasn't so bad, but getting it rolling was misery. Yeah, no, the, the first, uh, foray into recruiting and getting those first initial kids can be super hit or miss and it, it can make or break everything like yeah and as you know it resulted in you doing a million percent of the work which sucks yeah i mean there's a lot of a lot of running around to do and a lot of emailing and i'd say that that was like the majority of what i was doing and that's um, you starting it as someone who's played dodgeball for x years oh yeah right? yeah, yeah, and yeah, not yeah some random freshman or sophomore that decided they're interested yeah fortunately like i had enough experience with playing dodgeball and i had enough like networking contacts within the league itself that it is probably was probably a lot less painful for me than it would have been for somebody just coming in right Mm because i think you as as director of league expansion you've like worked directly with people but like you're their only point of contact whereas i was able to reach out to multiple sources and try to set things up and, and work with other people Mm-hmm. what advice would you have for other people looking to start a club uh be bold uh yell at people who need to get yelled at like i when i came in and i started the club here i was 27 ish uh, and so like i'm like i guess very well established in in like 
demanding what I want from people and like telling and going after what I need. Whereas like, you know, as people coming into college may not have the same yeah. like, confidence in, in doing that. Cause you're coming out of high school or whatever, and you haven't really been in that setting, but you know, ask for what you need. The worst they can say is no, you know, ch- like challenge everything. Like if you don't agree with it, challenge it. Um, you know, you got to be aggressive about getting what you want, uh, especially when it comes to starting a club. Because most schools don't want to give you money. Uh, they don't want to give you space. Even though they say that they do, they don't. So you've got to you've got to fight for it. And that's like the message I passed on to like my e-board now going forward. I just said, don't let up on these guys. Like, don't let them tell you they can't do things. Like, ask them why. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the point I was going to add on is make them tell you why. Because a lot of the times their mm-hmm. their reasoning for doing so is flimsy. And I find that frankly, a lot of them just don't want to contribute and put in any of the work to help you. And especially because they don't know if you're going to stick around as a club. And so they're very yeah. happy to give you money to help you to do anything. And it sucks. Yep. But you know, if, if you do that and you demonstrate like enthusiasm for the sport, um, like that's a lot of what you need. Um, and I guess like a, a bit of like organizational skills, like de- determining like what you want and what you need to get accomplished. Like, you know, finding practice space when you, are your recruiting events? Like, what do you need to do to attend these recruiting events? You know, making sure you have a really good plan in place to get those things accomplished. But yeah. honestly, just, just yelling at people who need to be yelled at. Mm-hmm. That's, that's 90% of it. Definitely. It's, it's a struggle sometimes. <laughs> um, oh, we skipped one more fun one. Uh, what is the best overall experience of your collegiate dodgeball career? This one's the family friendly one. Yo, I literally, like, I really had a, I thought about this one for a little bit. And I really, it's like, it's a really hard time picking just one. Uh, You have two? I have three. Uh, Give me them. One of, well, I guess like they they all kind of have a central theme. And and the central theme is just like the community of of the league and stuff. Because one one of them was uh, in Bowling Green when we like all the teams were in the hotel and we just uh like we just there was a picnic table out back and they had like a little courtyard and just it was all the teams just hanging out there we got yelled at i think we got the cops called on us just hanging out like just being being like, noisy. Dodgeball kids hanging out having a good time we were hanging out uh but yeah and then the next one is uh wku nationals where it was very much the same thing it was like this two-tiered hotel and it was awesome. And it was, I think, the year that you were on, uh, or one of the years I that you were at MSU. State, yeah. Yeah. And we were just well, like rolling at around. WMU, just, I was still at Central. But anyway. Oh, was it? I don't remember. It was a, it was a two tiered hotel. And it, oh no, that is it because uh, it, it was Dong Bags. Year. I had the Everclear. It was, it was Dong Bags year. <laughs> uh, Rip Darren. Yeah, uh, but we just like bouncing around to different rooms, like saying what's up to people, and like just having a really good time you know, in spite of the fact that like the next day everybody was at each other's throats to, to like try to win the title or to, to improve their seating. And last one, I think this one is probably like my favorite. If I had to pick one is the DePaul blizzard, baby. That was, (laughs) that was so much fun. Um, That was an amazing weekend. Yeah. We just went to DePaul to play uh, in a tournament and it was, it was you and me and we rode with somebody who had to go back because of basically a blizzard rolled in while we were playing on Sunday. Uh, and you and I said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to leave early. We're just going to stay and we'll figure we'll out getting home. <laughs> like, so we ended up like staying at uh, Sam Murphy's house with, I think it was like him, Grant and McTickles all live there. Right. Mm-hmm. And we just hung out. I think we watched the Super Bowl. You broke a sofa. Like it was, and then we just ended up like going and taking the train home. Uh, I have no idea how we got home from Grand Rapids, but somebody picked us up or something. Somebody picked us up. Yeah. And you know, it's just like another really good, fun example of just people hanging out in the league and, and like making those friendships that like last forever, basically. Yeah. No, and that's, like, such a fun story to tell, too, and, like, look back upon, and, like, we went out for pizza, the pizza sucked, or at least I thought the pizza sucked, 
you were doing survival tinder. Oh, I succeeded in survival tinder that yeah. time too. Oh, I think um, that's what it was. I think the girl I was dating at the time picked us up from Grand Rapids. Oh yeah. That's why you were you were survival yeah. tender, and I was just like, I'm just gonna crash on this crash on this broken couch, <laughs> <laughs> walking through Chicago in a blizzard to make yep. a new friend. Okay. Yeah, do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> uh, so go, jumping back to a serious question, um, now we're jumping back and forth a little bit. What was it like taking on hosting nationals with like very little notice? Like Greer had, or even typical like Nationals years, you get pretty much a full calendar year to prepare to host it. But you had like two, three months at the <clears> most. <throat> what was that like, um, uh, especially with a young club not really knowing what they're doing besides you? Well, my, the nice thing about my club this year is that like, they were very able and willing to help. Mm -hmm. um, and so like whenever I needed stuff done, I could like reach out to them and it would get done. Or I would be like, I'll meet you guys here and we'll get this done. Um, but I like, it was a lot of emailing, a lot of going back and forth. Um, to, honestly, to Western's credit, they did make it very easy for us to get the space. Uh, yeah. I think it took me like three emails between myself and the building director to get it set up. Uh, and then we had the courts and, it, and we were ready to go with that. That was probably like the easiest part. Um, the lack of time kind of made it a little bit more difficult to like kind of put together some of the stuff and coordinate. Like, like I said, with, with WKU nationals and, and BG nationals, like there were, there were teams hanging out at hotels and whatever. And I just didn't feel like we had a lot of opportunity to do that this year, uh, which sucked because like, that was one of the things that I've, I've touted very much to my, uh, my club members. Yeah. But, you know, see, like you also get the experience of like seeing how big the league is as well. So. It wasn't a total, you know, a total disaster, but yeah, I mean, it was it really just a lot of emails, a lot of, again, asking for what I needed um, and, you know, bothering people who needed to be bothered, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't so bad. The NCDA e-board could have been more on the ball, but that's, that's well, all. In what ways? Um, it just was very hard to get like straight answers on a lot of things and, and get things like done that I needed. I think I had to ask Kevin Bailey for a flyer like six times before he produced one. Um, and that was shout over the course of shout out to Kevin Bailey. Um, it was just over the course of like, you know, a month, a month and a half. And we just still had nothing. So we had nothing to like, it was hard yeah. for us to promote it. Um, and there's a lot of stuff happening all at once. I'm pretty sure that I like dropped the ball on a couple of things. Like that just fell through. Uh, like the hotels were so late in the game, like getting them out to the teams and whatever. And it was yeah. just because like, like I like reached out and I got some confirmations and I didn't follow up on them until like a week later. And then it was like more time. So everything oh, so being very, very compressed. So I can tell JMU and UNL that it's your fault that they got booted out of their hotels then. <laughs> oh, I don't care if you tell uh, JMU, UNL, it's my fault you got booted out of your hotels. There you um, go. It's on you're the welcome. record. Archive. <laughs> Archive. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that too, and I felt terrible. I was like, well, hot. That's, yeah. that's a little messed up. No, but, I mean, uh, they, they overbooked, which is something hotels do, I guess, even though they know they have a big party of several teams coming to stay there it's crazy to me hey dad why do you like math so much why do i like math so much i actually yeah. hate it uh but i'm good at it so mm -hmm. okay. we just roll with it uh no <laughs> this is actually a question i've gotten a lot uh so most people know mathematics is just like computations like adding subtracting maybe if you go a little bit deeper you get like derivatives and integrals but you know, once you start going up into like higher level stuff, you really peel back all the like layers of computation. And you start seeing like why everything works. Uh, it's, it's more or less like being able to read a watch and knowing like how to build a watch. Um, there's a lot of intricacy and a lot of like interplay that goes on in a lot of different subjects uh, that you just don't, don't expect. And everything in math works because like people did a lot of work to make sure that it did. 
So everything that you know about math or everything that you do has has proof, has you know, very rigorous standards of of working. So hmm. I'm gonna take away that math is hard and I still suck at it. So that's probably because you had a bad teacher. I teach you math, probably. baby bird. Uh, I do HR. I don't think I need math that much. Mm -hmm. I could use some more Excel skills, though, that I could use. Uh, what, what are you doing after school? This is the last one. So uh, what post PhD plans, what do you what ideally would you like to be doing? Well, currently, we're, we're gearing up to move. Uh, we're going to move to Grand Rapids for about a year. Uh, well, I kind of just I'm basically just job searching. Uh, ideally, I would like to uh, move out of country, go work somewhere like in Germany, uh, you know, or someplace that you just has, you know, like a developed, a nice developed country that has good standards of living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Not here. Yeah, right. Like, like I said, a developed country. Right. Uh, <laughs> not to get too political. Uh, but, you know, barring that, there's a couple of jobs I'm looking at out in uh, Colorado that I would like to go and apply for. Uh, but I have to write a resume and, and retool it all because it's been six ish, seven ish years since I've applied for a job. So yeah, it's just kind of getting a bunch of ducks in a row and getting things ready to go. But in theory, we'll hopefully have a job within the next year or so. Math nerds are in right now. So that's what I hear. Well, uh, as you know, I'll be rooting for you all the way. And wherever you end up, I'll be sad that you won't be close by, but happy that you'll be doing what you like. Yeah, whatever happened with those jobs in Cincinnati? <laughs> uh, I can keep looking for you. I, I have a there's hard time believing you'd find something like that. down here. They've got a use for them. That's true. All right, anyway, that's all we got, guys. Dad, Peter, I really, Dr. Bro, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to do this. Congratulations again on Baller of the Month. Thank you. Uh, stay in school, everybody. Go to grad school. Play more dodgeball. You heard it here first, folks. Stay in school. <laughs> don't graduate. And if you no, don't, get more degrees. Graduate multiple times. All right. Three. This is Wes Peters, Peter Bro. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.